Hi, welcome to another Unity Mobile from Scratch video tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to draw on the screen. So when you drag your finger across the screen, or even if you use the mouse, you'll leave a trail. The first thing that you'll need is a Unity project. So I've got a 3D project here. You can see I've got a camera and a directional light. This is currently set to orthographic, but this will actually work in orthographic or perspective. Uh, it won't matter. So I'll just set it to perspective and to show you that it works in that. First of all, let's create in the hierarchy an empty game object and we will call that swipe. Now to that swipe, we're going to attach a swipe trail code. This is C sharp. So create a new C sharp file and call it swipe trail and we'll drag and drop that onto the swipe object. Now, what's actually inside that? Let's have a look. It's quite short. What it's doing inside the update function is testing if there's been more than one touch on the screen and if the first touch is actually in the phase of moving. Now you'll be familiar with this code from previous tutorials and what I've also done is put an OR statement in there checking for the mouse button, left mouse button being down as well. The nice thing about this bit of code is that it's going to work on your mobile and it's also going to work on the screen. Uh, so we've kind of got a dual purpose so we can test it on the uh, desktop in the editor before we build it out to the device. Now, next, I'm going to make a plane. And I'm going to make a plane in the same way that we did when we started to touch 3D objects in the scene. And this plane will be positioned at the location of that swipe object and facing towards the camera. Because remember when we were drawing a ray into the environment and doing a ray cast, that we needed to actually be hitting some flat surface and then registering where we're moving our finger in order to actually move an object relative to that. So we'd need to do the same thing for the swipe. So this will create a plane at the position of your swipe object. So you need to make sure that your swipe object, which is here, now this one's currently at zero, uh, 0 0.75 Y, 0 in the Z, and the camera will be by default at minus 10 in the Z. So the swipe is inside the camera's viewing volume. That's what you want. You want that plane to actually be somewhere in front of the camera. Now, just back to the code. The um, next step is to create a ray based on the position of the mouse input. Now, remember position is also the same as input.getTouch0.position uh, except that if you're doing this in the editor on your desktop computer the getTouch0.position won't work so this is kind of a dual purpose code for the first finger touch as well as the mouse which works nicely right we then create a float for ray distance which is where our object gets hit when we do a ray cast sorry the plane not our object and uh, then we actually do that ray cast and then based on where we've hit that plane we're going to update the position of the swipe object to that position so this is basically the same kind of code that we had before when we were dragging a ball around and moving it on the screen um, and making it relative to where the mouse was right so that's what we've got let's save that now if we go back here let's just check we've got it attached to our swipe which we do this swipe object is currently empty so uh, we can press play and we can move around all we like and you can see in the scene that the swipe object is following where the mouse is touching but it's not drawing anything to now draw something we're going to add to the swipe a trail renderer so with the swipe selected go to the inspector add component and look for trail renderer and then click OK to add that. Just with the default settings for the trailer render on, we can now press play and check out what we're going to get. And so you'll see we're now drawing a trail renderer on the screen. And 
Notice that the end of the trial renderer is disappearing and that's in the settings for the actual trial renderer. So over here in the inspector, the trial renderer has a time for how long it exists. It also has a start width and a end width as well. Um, so if you wanted to have a very narrow end at the start of that trial render, let's put that down to 0 um, 0.1 and let's change it to just being like two seconds in length and run this. And see how it has a very narrow end at the start and it disappears much quicker than it did before. Now it's currently pink because of the material that it has and in this case it has no material. I've already created a white material just using a white image. I'm going to drag and drop that material over onto the trail renderer and then press play. And we're now drawing with white. So if you wanted to draw with black, then you'd put a black material in there. Incidentally, if you didn't want this trail to actually disappear, in the time setting, you can put the word infinity. And that will make it last forever. But as it gets longer, notice that the start, which is at 0 0.1, which will always be at 0 0.1, is that the body of the trail actually grows because it's keeping the start at 0 0.1 and the end at a width of 1. So it's going to um, determine the thickness all the way along here as a range between 0 0.1 and 1. Now, if I pick the mouse up and start drawing somewhere else, it will go from the end back to um, where I started drawing. And that's because it's a single trail renderer. It's not like multiple single objects. Now, last what I'll show you with this is how to change the colors. You can actually put a rainbow of colors on this object. If I just put some in here really quickly. Put a green on the end. Okay, so now I've got these colors put in here. If I press play at this point and try and draw, I've still got this white trail. To fix that, the only way you can get these colors to show up is to change the shader that you're using on your material. So if we go to our white material here, drop down the shader that it's using. You want to go to FX and then flare. Uh, which is just off the screen here for you. I'll just bring this in there. Actually, it's the only thing I've got under FX at the moment. So I'll select that as flare. And now when I press play, you can see that the rainbow gets applied to the object with the first color, which is this red being right here at this end, and the rest of the colors stretched out along the length of it to the um, green, which actually looks blue on my screen here, even though it's green over here. But if we change the camera's background color to a black and put it to a solid color, we'll get more vibrant colors coming out of our trail renderer, as you can see there. Right, so that's how to draw on the screen. And if you build this out to an Android device or iOS, you'll find that you can actually drag this around with your finger and draw as well. Um, so feel free to have a little play around with all these other settings of what they do and the different effects that you can actually come up with. Actually, one thing I will show you is this uh, minimum vertex distance here. This determines how... Um, rounded the shape's going to be. It's how close the vertices are together in your swipe. Because if you have a look at a swipe, if I can draw one really quickly and just pause it and zoom in on it over in the scene, you'll see that it's actually a mesh that's being created as you move along. Now the distance between the vertices here uh, is dictated obviously by the turns that you're doing and um, there's going to be less vertices when there's a straight line going on. But you can also determine on how close together the closest vertices are with this value. So if I put this up to 1, you'll see that it's much chunkier. So if I press play and then you draw, see how it's 
much more rigid, especially where it turns the corners and that. You don't get such a smooth thing as you do with 0 0.1. So that's another value you can, you can play around with. And that's uh, pretty much all there is to having a trail renderer.